What is the biggest difference, <coughs> though, with John versus Austin? Because obviously we know Austin is a sharpshooter. John maybe not as, as speedy. You know, how would you describe the difference when you're out there with those two centers? Um, I mean, I think you put both in a lot of scenarios around the net. Um, it's got a good chance of scoring. So for me, it's trying to find Johnny in those areas. Um, you know, for me, it's trying to find my way through the neutral with the puck a little more, maybe, and um, trying to find speed off the rush and trying to find him in spots where he's coming in later, you know, going backside and stuff like that. And um, but, I mean, I don't think much changes. They've got a lot of skill in both of them. They can make a lot of great plays and can take people on one on one. So um, it's not really surprising when one of them had the puck and do something spectacular. What says that the most about Malkin? Malkin or Malkin? Malkin. Yes, Malkin. Sorry. Well, I mean, obviously, just his body, his, his, his frame, his. How he moves on the ice just so fluently and relaxed and still how it's so good and um, does a lot of things that are just spectacular on the ice with his skill set and his, his plays, his shots, his hands. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty spectacular to watch. So um, for us, we just got to make sure we try and take away that time and space, make it uncomfortable and um, try not to give him too much time with the puck in his hands because he's going to start and feel it and um, it makes your team uh, pay for it. How tough is it to fill the void that TJ fills <coughs> back in? Yeah, quite a bit. Um, obviously, just what he does for us on the penalty kill, first off, of great sticks, um, makes a lot of great desperation saves of blocks, of passes and stuff like that, especially even strength-wise, too. I mean, uh, you know, you can always depend on him defensively. He's always in the right spot. He's always making the right play. So um, he's definitely a big piece. But um, Benny's done a great job, obviously, last game, coming in and taking that void and, and turning it into something special and being a big difference maker for us. We got the news today. Jake is going to be out until at least the end of February now with his spine injury. <coughs> when you hear that, you know how are you processing processing that news? Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> I talk to him all all the time, pretty much almost every day. I'm sure I'm almost talking to him more than his wife. And um, but you know, it's um, it's it's, an, it's unfortunate. It's sad, um, just as being his teammate, but more so his friend, just because you know how much he loves the game and how much he dedicates himself in the summer times to doing the right things, putting himself in the right spots to be successful and, and to be ready for the years every time. And, um, you know, when you get news like that or from him, I heard about it a lot earlier than you guys, obviously. Um, but when you get news like that, I mean, it's pretty emotional. It's just me and him in the room when he told me. And um, it's a sad thing. But, you know, like I've said before, there's a lot of bigger things out here than hockey and, and playing this game. And that's your family and people around you that you love. And um, he's got an unbelievable family and, and group around him that has been Amazing for him through this time, and um, I mean, he's been he's been awesome around uh, the rink. Still, just so much um, support and, and positivity, and um, you know, he's a great person to have around the rink all the time. And he's still bringing that positivity regardless of the news that he's getting. And um, it's just a spectacular guy to have around. It's, it's tough to not have him on the ice and with you every day, but at least having him in the room and around the guys, it's it's a, it's a lot of uplifting. Being a good friend of him, like you are, for various nature of yourself. Can I help him get through this? That yeah. he said. Um, yeah, I mean that's what we're trying. I mean you try to do obviously, right? Like, uh, like I was just saying there. It's you know, he's got an amazing wife at home. He's got two amazing kids that I see a lot of Snapchats from and videos from that are just always having a lot of fun, a lot of joy, and um, him always with them and just bringing a lot of joy with them. It's it's uh, it's great to watch. So. Um, we try to help him out as much as we can, obviously, around the rink and stuff like that. But he's been bringing an amazing amount of support uh, support and positivity around their locker room. Just always there to talk to you about plays and games, after games, about stuff. And, um, you know, obviously, he's a big part of this team, regardless if he's on the ice or not. Just having his support around the rink is huge for our team. And, um, you know, we're trying to keep him uplifted as much as we can. He's still working his bag off out there in the gym every single day trying to just stay ready and um, it's great to watch him still just continue to push through and, and, and just get stronger and stronger and try and be ready just in case anything ever happens again and um, but he's got an amazing support crew at home he knows he's got a lot of great close friends around this locker room and around other locker rooms too I mean he's well known he's a lot of people if you talk to, to them about Jake Muzz and they're gonna say a lot of good things about him so um, we're very lucky to have him in blue and white and around this locker room. What kind of a toll do you think this has taken on you? Do you have a sense of how difficult this I, I mean, I think it'd be hard for me to speak on that, but just from my own experiences being injured and, you know, not being around the guys of road trips, of going on the plane rides, just being around, um, eventually it does start, obviously, kind of just, it hurts, I would say, just not being around the guys, not being, in, you know, being able, you're able to watch, but not able to really 
obviously you want to be on the ice and be a contributor and be a difference maker. And Jake's that kind of guy of, you know, when penalty kills are coming up, he's the guy you look to the, to make big blocks, make big plays, and just really lean on. And, I mean, I'm sure he wants to be out there more than anyone in the world. So um, it obviously sucks for him, but, you know, we just try and keep him going. And like I, I'm, I keep saying, but... Um, Court's gonna think I'm like in love with her here, but um, <laughs> um, but you know he's got he's got amazing people around him. He's you know luckily enough he, him and his family are around here all the time. Um, he's not too far from home. He's not too far from a lot of his buddies, his family. So um, you know we've been trying to keep him busy and trying to keep him doing things. And obviously it's a little chilly now. We can't go out golfing, which is probably one of his favorite things, if not his favorite thing in the world. But um, you know he's. He's been doing a lot of great things around the room, just bringing a lot of positivity, bringing a lot of great attitude, and we're lucky to have him. Do you feel the new kind of line alignment worked out on Saturday? Yeah, I still think we can uh, uh, generate a little more. Uh, I think, uh, you know, make it a little tougher on the opponent, but uh, certainly two guys very familiar with and uh, played a lot with uh, in my time here. So, uh, obviously, really good players. You know, I thought Kerf uh, uh, found me a few times for some nice looks. So. Uh, just keep building on that. Uh, obviously, a good uh, a good uh, team effort on Saturday, and um, you know, good practice day to day, and, and uh, uh, look forward to the challenge tomorrow, and, and uh, uh, working together to, to make a difference. Do you feel the residual chemistry that you and Mitch had in that first 47 goal season still exists whenever you guys get put back together? Yeah, I think you know, I, I think our games do mesh well. Um, I think obviously uh, we played you know the whole year that year together and had a lot of success. So um, and I've had, had had periods here and there uh, since then, and you know still play obviously a good amount of time on the power play. So um, obviously I have a really good feel for his game. Uh, I think he has a good feel for mine. So um, don't need to go out there and try to force the issue and do too much. I think we just stay with good habits and, and work ethic and and uh, uh, understand uh, uh, the structure we're playing with as a group and and uh, uh, let those habits and those details let our let our games kind of come out and our instincts to come out and, and do good things and uh, make the plays when they're there. What is the adjustment of when we are reunited with one of the best passers in the league? Well, it's just always to be ready. And uh, I know uh, how well he reads time and space and. Uh, seeing the play develop uh, a couple steps ahead. So for me, it's just trying to put my, myself in a spot where, you know, you know, when he gets it, he's he's usually got a good sense of kind of where you're going before it's even coming. So just always kind of being ready, um, you know, and his ability to uh, obviously play uh, with tremendous pace, but his ability to slow it down uh, is, is uh, uh, very elite as well. Uh, extremely hard to teach, and his deception is, is second to none in the league. So. Uh, all those types of things, uh, just kind of his uh, his mannerisms, I guess, as a hockey player that make him uh, who he is and, and the deception that he plays with and how he can find the open man um, even before the play is kind of uh, developed. You've known before us, John, but what, what's your reaction to what Jake Muzzin's going through? Yeah, it's difficult to see. Uh, you know, obviously, we we think so much of him and, and care about him uh, a lot, and he's such a big part of our locker room and our team. So. Um, not easy news uh, at all, and, and we're there for him. And obviously, just hope things uh, uh, continue to, gra- to progress from from this, you know, standpoint on. It's, it's not uh, going to be in any way like your return to Long Island. But what do you think it'll be like if Murray's back in in Pittsburgh for the first time in a while? Yeah, um, you know, we're, uh, first time is always uh, probably a little bit of nerves and and uh, not really sure of what it's going to be like. Um, obviously, had a lot of success there. Um, you know, so I, I'm sure he's got a lot of fond memories and and uh, and whatnot. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I think you know, you know, for him, uh, just focusing on on playing his game and what he has to do, uh, and getting getting into the game. I think sometimes you know, there's obviously the big build up, but once you kind of get rolling and uh, you know the puck drops, it's, it gets a little easier with just focusing on on playing the game and and what you need to do to um, you know be out there to contribute. Have you been be able to beat him a few more times since that first practice? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. Hopefully, uh, uh, I can't recall. We've uh, uh, he's he's looked sharp and, and he's been uh, uh, been working extremely hard. And I know we've seen him in here some long days uh, from his therapy to his, his rehab to obviously progression on the ice and doing everything he needs to do to get ready to play. So um, you know he's been very diligent on top of things. Um, obviously, as a shooter, you know when when you, you know your goalies are competing like that in practice and working on their games, it only makes you better as well. So it's great to, uh, great to have that how he prepares himself, but also pushes the group too. Thank you. Thank you. Are you in tomorrow? Uh, any lineup decisions is up to the coach, not up to me to, to decide. Are you feeling ready though? 
Sorry? If he taps you on the shoulder, do you feel like you're at a point where you, you could return? Um, yeah, I mean, I th I'm taking things one day at a time right now. So again, I'm not going to make any comments on, uh, on the lineup. That's that's not my place. That'll be coach's uh, coach's job. How do you feel the progression has gone now? This is what practice, full practice number three for you back. Yeah, yeah, I think it's uh, the progress has been really good. Like I said, they uh, they do a heck of a job here, and um, I think we're, we're doing things the right way. So uh, I'm really happy with the progress. If you are, in, how do you anticipate the return to the game for you? Well, I always enjoy going back to Pittsburgh and you know seeing people that uh, that I haven't seen in quite some time. So um, I'll be looking forward to that. And um, yeah, other than that, just just keep going one day at a time. I think it'll be a little easier because even though you didn't play, you got that video tribute last season, and that's kind of maybe some of the emotions would be out of the way. Yeah, yeah, it's not my not my first time back, right. but uh, like I said, it, it's always nice to to get back there and see see a lot of people that uh, obviously I spent a lot of time with and. You know, even uh, some of the security guys in the building and, and people like that, you know, guys that took care of me when I was there. So just uh, really cool to, to get to see those kinds of people. What do you remember most about your first game against Pittsburgh? Um, against Pittsburgh? Yeah. Uh, you're talking about last year? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, Two nothing lost, but only one goal. One was an empty netter. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, again, like I said uh, the other day before they came in, in here, they're just a dangerous group. So, um, you know, being on the other side of it for the first time was definitely strange after practicing with those guys for so long. But, um, yeah, they're they're a dangerous group, so you got to be on your toes. We asked you a lot about Crosby. What what stands out the most about Malkin? Man, what doesn't? I mean, um, his size, his his speed at that size, his shot, his hockey sense. Um, you know, that's why he's one of the best players and has been for, you know. Who knows how many years now? So, uh, one of the big reasons why why that team's so dangerous. As Senator Reese was saying, it was kind of funny listening to him bicker with when he gets a call a penalty against him, and then Sullivan said he kind of made him go to beast mode when he gets rolling. When he got that gets that look in the eyes, what what does that mean? Yeah, I mean that's what makes him such a special player. He's got that gear that he can turn on and makes him you know really hard to stop. That's why he's been so successful for so long. And, um, like you said, when he when he goes into that mode, he, he's a dangerous player. When you look at that Penguins roster, who do you think's underrated? Who doesn't get enough attention? Do you think? Oh, I don't know. I mean, um, that's a that's a tough question to answer. I, I don't really know who's underrated, who's overrated. I, I just think you know, uh, their their entire team is is uh, just full of depth, right from the top of the lineup, right all, all the way through. Um, they got a good goaltending, obviously a great D. Um, you know, a lot of turnover since I've been there, but still, um, yeah, they, they just got a heck of a team, and obviously we got to see them uh, a couple of days ago, so we know a little bit about what they're about. I think it just makes sense to continue with it for a little bit here, and combination of that and, and keeping some of the other lines looking similar, but and bringing Holmberg in and gives us a natural center in that uh, line as well. You know, we had intended to give him more of an opportunity than he got, frankly, uh, the first time around. But uh, somebody that we, we like and, and want to give more of an opportunity to. Sheldon, how have you been absorbing the news on Jake, not only as a player, but as a person as well? Um, I'm sorry, did you say how am I? How you're just absorbing the news on Well, Jake. absorbing. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, it's, it's obviously not fresh or new news uh, right. to me. So um, something we've, we've uh, you know, come to terms with in terms of... <clears throat> You know, um, his situation and, and feeling for him, you know, how much of a competitor that he is and how bad that he wants to be out on the ice and helping our team. And, and he's doing all that he can to still be a part of our team uh, and help us with his experience and his perspective. It's a different perspective now watching from, a, from afar uh, during games, but still being connected and here in our facility every day. And, and at the same time, you know, he's... You know, the competitor that he is, despite it's a, a long road ahead uh, for him, he's, I mean, I, I still see him in the gym every day, you know, pushing himself and, and doing all that he can. So uh, all of that uh, said, he's a, it's a tough loss for us. He's a very important player for many reasons. Um, but I still you know, remain confident that we can uh, you know, have other guys step up and fill fill his shoes as best as possible. Though they're different, we have different uh, types of you know players. He's a very unique guy uh, to our team, but uh, we we have been managing it well and expect we'll continue to. Is there a timeline on Brody? Would you be 
Exactly. Obviously, it's on the IR, so it's going to be a minimum of a week there. Um, in terms of the exact timeline, we'll have to just see. I think his injury appears to be somewhat similar in nature to what uh, John Tavares went through in, in camp. So uh, just be a matter of managing it and just kind of seeing how he is after a week's time and, and uh, you know, s- s- get him comfortable and then take it from there. Who's playing goal tomorrow? Uh, Matt Murray, though, you know, that's, that's the plan that he's been preparing for that. I haven't spoken to anybody uh, since practice ended, but uh, based on what I observed in practice, he very much looks ready to go. How uh, encouraged are you that you, you've got uh, you're getting them back? Yeah, very encouraged. I mean, uh, well, listen, first of all, uh, Eric Schalgren did a good job, as far as I'm concerned, here for us. And uh, we feel good about that. Gave us a chance to win when he's in the net. Uh, yet Matt Murray is a big part of our team. And to have it back healthy and, and get him an opportunity to get back in the net and get get uh, rolling, is that's important for us. So, um, you know, it's uh, really good to see that he's come back here sort of on the, the early side of his timeline. You know, it was kind of that four to six week type of deal. And he put in a lot of hard work and medical team, you know, uh, took care of him and pushed him hard and uh, you know he looks very much ready we've given him a few extra days here in the addition of this practice to add to his workload uh, so that he's all the more prepared and making sure that uh, you know that he's 100% um, and when I say 100% there's there's the physical part of it with the actual injury and then there's getting in the net and stopping pucks and getting into your routine and feeling confident that you can go and uh, perform um, at your best. How's the Elias Samsonov trending? The fact he's on the ice this has to be encouraging. Yeah, again, I haven't had an update since we've left the, the, the practice, but just the amount of work that he did today tells me he's feeling really good. I know they were sort of going to start off the day kind of feeling it out to, uh, and making sure they're not progressing too quickly, but we expect him to take a step today from what he has been doing on the ice, and he looked like he did that and then some. So, yeah, very encouraging to have, and, and great to see both guys out on the ice there working together. Can you explain the decision to have Mac Hollowell up, and do you anticipate him, you know, getting in his NHL debut at some point? Well, I mean, the decision to, to bring him up is, you know, first of all, we like the player, and he's he's come up here a, a bunch of times now, and hasn't gone in, but he's he's you know, been playing very well with the Marlies, and they have some injuries uh, there as well with, with both Mete and Crawl, uh, so you know that uh, he's the next man up, sort of thing, and and. Uh, you know, uh, as for terms of him getting in, there's no plans for that, for that at this point. We like the group that we have uh, to go tomorrow, but every day is a new day. It's the first time you've had to deal with Brody out. Um, what's the biggest challenge? He does so much. Yeah, it's uh, the stability that he brings, you know, uh, not just in how he plays, but also in how he makes others better around him. Uh, so that's, you know, that's, that's the biggest piece for sure. I was really happy with how we managed that the other night. Um, Jordy Ben coming in and playing his first game for us and us being on the back to back and all those kind of things uh, had to kill some some penalties real late in the game with the game on the line and you know it was really encouraging to see how the guys responded to that and we're obviously going to need more of it.